Hello. Uh, tonight, I would like to talk to you about the reluctant risk taker, me. I believe everybody has an event or an opportunity in their life that forces them to get pushed out of their comfort zone, to challenge them to think about who they are and who they want to be. For me, that event happened just a few weeks after the learning conference in Beijing in 2012. Just two weeks after the conference, I had to go to the hospital and have my gallbladder out, thanks to this little guy here. And even though it was probably the best hospital stay one could ever have, I realized that during that time that I do not want to go to the hospital again. So I made a series of small but increasingly challenging changes to my lifestyle so that I could become the healthiest version of myself that I could be. And if you had told me at Learning 2.0 2012 that I would forward. be a person standing here in front of you, loving to go out running, signing up for races, eating vegan food, and enjoying lifting heavy weights at the gym, Good. I would never believe you. But looking back over the last two years, I realized that I've been teaching myself to become a risk taker. And even though in some facets of my life I might be more comfortable taking risks than others, this one was a big challenge for me. I think I've actually developed a little bit of a formula that can work for any kind of risk, whether it's personal or professional or even for your students. So I'm going to share that formula with you in just a minute. But I'd like to ask you to think about a risk that you haven't taken yet, a challenge that's facing you, something you would really like to do but you're not sure where to start. So take a moment and think about your risk. So we all know risk taking is really hard. In fact, it's really hard for me to stand up here in front of you and tell you this kind of personal story. Uh, but I think this formula that I've developed is so easy, even the most reluctant risk taker can give it a try. So the first stage is to identify the risk, to recognize that this is going to be challenging. It's going to be hard. And you might have to get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. One of the ways we can do that is try to promote a growth mindset. Instead of thinking, I can't do this, try to think more along these lines. In fact, try to think, try to question to yourself, can I do this? Because that's opening you up for failure. And that's a real risk, right? With the potential for failure. So ask yourself, can I do this? My first can I do this moment was when I left the doctor's office after he told me I had to have the surgery and he told me some horrible news. He told me no tempura, no fried foods, no nuts, no cheese, no fats of any kind for six long weeks. And anyone who was at Learning 2.0 uh, in Beijing knows that that was a terrible time for me. Not only could I not eat any of these foods, guys, but I could not eat chocolate. No chocolate for six weeks. Uh, it was hard, and I'm not going to lie to you, there were some temper tantrums in the grocery store, and I consoled myself with uh, dreams of cheese and chocolate parties that I would have after the operation. Uh, but I survived, and actually I felt a lot better after the surgery than I did before, so I decided to continue with this diet. And I realized I didn't actually know that much about this kind of healthy eating, so I needed to seek inspiration, and that's the second step of this process. I started um, looking for ways that I could inspire myself to continue to eat healthy. And I started with this movie, Forks Over Knives, and that kind of led me to some other reading and some other documentaries and to quite a lot of shopping on co.jp that my husband did not like very much. And while I was eating and doing all this healthy stuff and feeling great about myself, I was just, just eating. And then one day, one of my friends um, at YIS, Elaine, came up to me and said, Kim, do you want to go running with me? And of of course, my first reaction was, absolutely not. This is the kid who would fake an asthma attack so she did not have to run the one mile for the president's fitness test. I was not going to go running. But she actually convinced me to go, and I loved it. And I realized that I needed to build a network of support that was both local and global. I needed my local friends to help motivate me, but I needed that inspiration of that global network where I could use the tools that I've learned in my professional life to apply to this challenge that I was facing. Um, I could follow the Twitter feeds of the people from Forks Over Knives or follow fitness experts, or I could join Google Plus communities or Facebook communities to inspire me. And the combination of that local and global network was what empowered me to keep going. And as I continued on this journey, I realized that I had new steps that I could take and new areas for growth. 
So I think that's the third, the fourth stage of this process is understanding that you always have another step to take. And that's why it's so important that these networks are fluid and dynamic and changeable with the steps that you need to take so you can build something that works for you. This is where I am right now, and I don't know where I'll be a year from now or two years from now, but it's exciting to think that I can just keep going. It's a limitless journey of growth. And isn't that what we want for our students? We want them to be able to take risks, to challenge themselves, to try new things, to seek inspiration from wherever they can find it, to build a network of support that will help them learn and grow and challenge themselves every day. And actually, that's what we want for you. You took the first risk. You're here at Learning 2.0. We hope that you find inspiration in our Learning 2 leaders and our workshop leaders. We hope that you build a network of support from the participants and the cohort sessions. And we hope that you find room for growth in the unconference sessions like we just demonstrated. So I need to ask you before I get off the stage, what's your risk? Thank you.